بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My topic today will be about safe use of electrosurgery My topic today will include physics of electrosurgery, electrosurgical tissue effect, complications, and finally, conclusion. Imagine, I ask it from you to play with this tiger every morning, while you are not trained to play with it. Of course, you will get panic. In reality, as a surgeon or as a gynecologist, you are playing with dangerous instrument looks like this tiger. You can't believe me? Okay. Wait and see. <laughs> Electrosurgery unit, one of the most hazardous devices used in daily basis. Evidence shows that many surgeons have a gap in their knowledge of the basic principle of electrosurgery, which can compromise patient safety. Physician using Electrosurgery must be knowledgeable about prevention and the management of potential complications of electrosurgical procedures. In addition, they should understand the mechanism of action and how to troubleshoot equipment. If we need to speak about electrocutary or electrosurgery, we must go to the land of civilization. To Egypt. In the Edwin Smith papyrus, the oldest surgical text, ancient Egyptians documented the use of electrocautery to treat ulcers and tumors of the breast as far back as 5,000 years ago. If we are speaking about electrocautery and electrosurgery, no one can forget Abu Qasim al Zahrawi known as Al-Bukaziz. One of the Arabic Islamic scientists it is considered as the father of modern medicine. He described the use of electrocautery in the management of many diseases. I would like to invite everyone to review the history of Abu Qasim al-Zahrawi Al-Bukaziz, the pioneer of modern surgery. No doubt, we will get great benefit after reviewing his history. What is the difference between electrocautery and electrosurgery? Is it the same? Of course, no. Electrocautery is the basic application of heat to the tissue to produce the effect, while electrosurgery refers to the cutting and the coagulation of tissue using high frequency electrical current remember high frequency electrical current definitions
Current is the flow of electrons during a period of time. While voltage is the force which pushes the current through the impedance or resistance. Resistance Impedance or resistance is the opposition to the flow of the current. We have two types of current. The first type called direct current, DC, looks like in simple battery, where the electrons always flow in the same direction, unidirectional. The second type called alternating current, or EC, where the electrons it changes direction periodically, so it is bidirectional, looks like electrical wall outlet and of course alternating current is used in electro surgery as we see in direct current the electrons moving in one direction while in alternating current the electrons periodically changing the direction in electro surgery we are using alternating current, so we'll be concentrating about it. Two definitions you must be aware. In alternating current, one called the cycle and one called the frequency. What is the cycle? The cycle, it is the time required to pass through one complete positive and one complete negative alternation of the current or voltage. While frequency, refer to the number of cycle in one second and it is measured in hertz so in simple way if your current at home has a frequency of 50 or 60 hertz means this current have 50 or 60 cycles per second again as we see electrocutary is a passive transfer of heat to the tissue with no current passing through the tissue. So, in electrocutary, no current pass the tissue, but it is a simple effect of heat. As we mentioned before, in electrosurgery, we are using alternating current high frequency, not direct frequency, to avoid the electrolytic effect what is the electrolytic effect? Electrolytic effect means the positive and the negative ions in the cell move to the negative and the positive poles, leading to damage to the tissue. Again, each time an alternating current reverse direction is considered one cycle, frequency refer to the number of cycles in one second and is measured in hertz kilohertz is equal to 1000 hertz the generator or electrosurgical unit had three main function first one conversion of low electrical frequency of the mean 50 to 60 hertz to higher frequency half millions to three million hertz. The second function, adjustment of the wattage and indirectly the voltage. And the third function to control the duty of the cycle. And the questions now, why we are converting low frequency current 50 to 60 to high frequency current? Think about the answer. So the answer, in electrosurgery we are using alternating current in high frequency, alternating current to avoid electrolysis as we mentioned before, high frequency to avoid 
Zafaradic effect on the nerve and the muscle. This faradic effect on nerve and the muscle ceases at frequencies more than 100 kilohertz. So in simple way, high frequency to avoid electrical shock. In electrosurgery, the frequencies commonly used are greater than 500 kilohertz, which are similar to radio frequency. So the term radio frequency electrosurgery is used. Now let us to discuss the waveforms. The surgeon can choose the output setting for the electrosurgical unit to produce waveform. This waveform may be cutting waveform, may be coagulation waveform, and may be blended waveform. We need to know what is the definition of cutting waveform, what is the definition of coagulation, what is the definition of blended waveform. It is important to mention that the difference between cut waveform and the coagulation waveform summarized in two important things. The first is the voltage, the second is the duty cycle. In cut waveform, the voltage is low, while in coagulation waveform, the voltage is high. In cut waveform, the duty cycle is 100%, while it is 60% to only in coagulation mode. What is the meaning of duty cycle? Duty cycle means during a cut mode, electrosurgical unit generate electrons in 100% of the time, while in coagulation mode, electrosurgical unit generate electron in 60% of the time and have a rest in 94% of the time. So it is called 60% on and 94% off. Duty cycle, it is the ratio of the on time to the total on and off time of a signal. Cutting waveform. In cutting mode or in cutting waveform, the electrosurgical unit generates a continuous or unmodulated low voltage current, concentrating the energy at a small area, so high current density because the area is small. The cutting mode results in more rapid tissue heating than the coagulation mode. Of course, if the tissue is heated rapidly, the oscillation of the alternating current to cause intense vibration and the heat within the cells, and this will lead to cells to be explode and form a smoke. This is called vaporization, and there is a mechanism whereby tissue is cut. To cut tissue, the tip of electrode should be held very near the tissue to concentrate the current at the tip and do not in direct contact with the tissue. form called coagulation mode characterized by high voltage and interrupted or modulated the electrosurgical unit generate an interrupted or modulated high voltage current dispersed over a large surface area so the low current density as an example the current may flow approximately 60% of the time and be of 94% of the time this proportion can be adjusted. The modulated current allows the tissue to cool slightly, so tissue heating is slower compared with the cutting mode. This results in coagulation, which is a dehydration effect, loss of cellular fluid, and protein denaturation, 
rather than vaporization. Dehydration is not as effective as vaporization for cutting tissue, but it is ideal for sealing a blood vessel. The modulated current require a high power setting or higher voltage to achieve dehydration, which you cause more tissue damage and the more thermal spread, increasing the risk of potential complications. For this reason, men recommend the use of cutting mode most of the time, reserving coagulation for selected circumstances, such as in highly vascular tissue and when dealing with the tissue with poor conductivity like fatty or dry tissue. In this situation, the higher voltage on the coagulation setting provide better tissue penetration. to here to mention that there is misnomers for the using the term cutting mode or coagulation mode because using a cutting mode we can use it for cutting and for coagulation and also the coagulation mode we can use for coagulation and sometime for the cutting so in of the above waveform either the cutting waveform or coagulation waveform or blended waveform can produce both effect cutting and the coagulation by modifying other factors that impact the tissue effect. Hence, the cut and coagulation mode are misnomers. They are better referred to as continuous low voltage for the cutting mode or interrupted high voltage for the coagulation mode rather than saying cutting or coagulation mode. The waveforms may be cutting coagulation, and the third type it is called blended mode. Blend it is a modification for the cutting mode to produce a cutting effect with some coagulation. It can be blend one, blend two, blend three, according to the percentage of activation and the rest of the cycle. Several blend options are also available combining various proportions of the two main modalities. This blend enhances the ability of cutting a current to coagulate a small bleeder during this section and coagulation current to dissect the tissue during hemostasis. Remember that greater voltage means greater force means greater risk. So the high volt as in coagulation current is more risky than the low voltage in pure cutting mode. Here it is important to mention as a general rule, all electrosurgery is bipolar, but the difference where we can put the return electrode. Scientifically, we divide electrosurgery into two types bipolar and monopolar but remember all are bipolar indeed conventional bipolar instrument were introduced to overcome the limitations and the complications of the monopolar counterparts how bipolar is working bipolar instruments are designed with the use of two electrodes one active electrode and one return electrode the return electrode situated at the tip of the instrument they are generally safer than the monopolar instrument why because the current is passing from the generator active electrode grasp it to show return electrode and this return electrode at the tip of an instrument so there is no dispersive electrode so it is more safe in addition, it using a continuous low voltage current, and this increases the safety of bipolar than monopolar. As we see here, during bipolar usage, 
bipolar use continuous low voltage current. The maximum voltage is 750 volts. So its risk in comparison to monopolar electrosurgery is low. Monopolar instrument, the current will pass from the generator to the active electrode. From active electrode to the target tissue. Then the current will pass through the body of the patient to a return or dispersive electrode which away from the instrument and from the patient electrode returning back to the electrosurgical unit. So the body of the patient will be a part of the circuit in contrast to the bipolar where the return electrode at the tip of an instrument. So monopolar is more risky than bipolar. As we mentioned before, in monopolar electrosurgery, we are using high voltage current. In coagulation monopolar mode, the voltage ranges between 3,500 volts up to 9,000 volts. While in cutting monopolar, the voltage ranges between 1,300 volts up to 2,300 volts. In simple comparison between monopolar and bipolar instruments, in general, bipolar instruments are more safer than monopolar. Bipolar has less risk regarding lateral thermal spread, no risk of direct coupling, no risk of capacitive coupling, no risk of alternating site injury, but still has its risk regarding insulation failure, inadvertent activation, current leakages through the cord. The message here, bipolar instrument is more safer than monopolar. Both of them has a risk, so we must be cautious during our work using the electrosurgical unit. Multiple choice. Monopolar electrosurgery is safer than bipolar electrosurgery. Is it true, non-available or false? False. Of course, false. Why? Because in monopolar electrosurgery, the circuit is completed by the current passing through the patient and the return through an active patient electrode. And in bipolar surgery, the current is confined between the poles of the electrosurgical equipment. What is the thermal effect of heat on our tissue? or the patient tissue. 37 degree representing the normal body tissue. If the temperature or the heat increasing to 40 degree, it will not cause no structural damage. At 50 degree, it will cause cell death within six minutes. 60 degree, it will cause instant cell death. And if the temperature elevated between 60 and 90 degree, it will cause white coagulation. It is an instant cell death, desiccation, and coagulation. And if elevated to 100 degree, it will cause cutting effect or cellular vaporization. And if the temperature is elevated to 200, it will cause black coagulation or carbonization. Come to multiple choice. In electrosurgery, charring, blackening of the tissue. Confirm a correct duration of application of the heat. Is it true or false or non available? False. Of course, false. Because of your answer is true, it is incorrect. Charring or blackening shows that the heat has been applied for a long time. But if your answer is false, it is correct because correct duration can be seen with the blanching of the tissue.
electrosurgical tissue effects. There is three main effects. The first one called the desiccation. The second one called the vaporization. The third one called fulgurish. Desiccation, it is a direct contact between the active electrode and the tissue. Remember, desiccation is starting with D, so D direct contact. D will cause dehydration of the tissue. D will cause denaturation of the protein. The second effect, vaporization or cutting. The third one is fulgurations, and we will discuss everyone in details. Now I will discuss the different tissue effect using different wave form. If I am using continuous low volt or what is called the cutting mode and the active electrode not in direct contact so it is away from the target tissue, the tissue effect will be clean cutting effect and this is the way where we can cut the tissue using cutting mode. On the other hand, if I use the continuous low volt mode or the cutting mode, while the active electrode come in direct contact with the target tissue, the effect will be desiccation or coagulation, but it is the white coagulation. I need to pay your attention to that. When we coagulate using the cutting mode, the depth of coagulations is more deeper in comparison to that if we are using the coagulation mode. And you will observe the difference after two slides from this one. If I using the blend cut mode and the active electrode non-contact, so it will be reducing the cutting with some hemostasis, cut with hemostasis, while I am using the cut or the continuous low volt mode. So with cutting mode, I can produce coagulation and cutting. With blend mode, I can be reducing cutting and the coagulation, and I can modify area of cutting and area of coagulations according to the type of blend mode. I came to the slide where I need to compare between using the interrupted high volt coagulation mode, when the active electrode come in contact, it will be producing white coagulation or desiccation. Here, as I mentioned before, the desiccation or coagulation will be less in depth in comparison with the desiccation or coagulation produced when I am using the cutting mode. Finally, if I, use, if I am using the interrupted high voltage coagulation mode and the active electrode not in contact away from the target tissue, the result will be superficial black coagulation or fulgurations, superficial coagulations, and it is suitable for hemostasis in mild oozing or in bleeding with blood vessels less than two millimeters, if two millimeters or more non-effective. Again, remember, in desiccation, there is direct contact between active electrode and the tissue, can be produced by cutting mode or coagulation mode, and vaporization, no contact between the active electrode and the tissue produced by using low voltage cutting mode, vulgarization, no contact also between active electrode and the tissue produced by high voltage coagulation mode. Here I can summarize the electrosurgical effect of monopolar instrument. You are kindly requested to slow the motion of the video and have a detailed look for this.
again vaporization using low voltage continuous mode non-contact between an instrument and the tissue pure cut fulguration interrupted high voltage mode non-contact between active electrode and the tissue superficial coagulations suitable for oozing of blood vessels or if the bleeding is less than two millimeters more than two millimeter non-effective comparison between desiccation produced by coagulation mode and the cutting mode desiccation by cutting mode will be more deeper so it is will be more deep using coagulation it will be superficial desiccations Factor modifying electrosurgical effect. There are seven factors can modify the electrosurgical tissue effect. First one is the waveform. As we mentioned before, electrosurgical unit can be using different electrical waveform. Looks like cutting waveform, coagulation mode waveform, and blend mode waveform. The second factor is power output. In general, surgeons should use the lowest effective power setting to achieve the desired effect because higher wattage is associated with increased risk of unintended tissue burn. A power setting of between 50 watt and 80 watt is recommended for effective cut mode Whereas a setting of between 30 watt and 50 watt is recommended for effective coagulation mode. Electrode surface area. The smaller the electrode, the higher the current concentration. Reducing the contact area of the active electrode by a factor of 10 increase the current density by a factor of 100 without changing the power setting. Activation time. Long activation time increases the extent of the tissue damage, whereas too short activation time may result in an inadequate tissue effect. Tissue contact. Different effect can be reduced if the active electrode is contact or non-contact with the tissue. Tissue resistance. Tissue vary widely in their resistance. Thermal change increase with increased tissue resistance. Tissue with a high water content, such as muscle and the skin, have less resistance or impedance to current flow. By contrast, scarred tissue and the fat have very high resistance. Escar. Escar has high impedance to current. Therefore, cleaning the active electrode of SR reducing the resistance and enhance electrosurgical effect. Using a moist electrode to cut a wet tissue facilitate the production of the steam envelope necessary for effective cutting. Welcome back to multiple choice. The question. In electrosurgery, high power and high voltage should be used to achieve quick result. 
It's a question again. In electrosurgery, high power and the high voltage should be used to achieve a quick result. What's your answer? If you mention true, it is incorrect answer. High power and the high voltage can be dangerous to the patient. If you mentioned the, the answer is false, your answer is okay or correct, the aim should be to use the lowest possible power setting. As we mentioned before, different tissue had a different tissue resistance. The higher the resistance, the higher the power required to achieve the electrosurgical effect. Fat and the fibrous tissue representing the most resistant tissue. Again, Again complications. complications. Now we will discuss the complications of monoboral electrosurgery. During my discussion, I will mention also the complications of bipolar electrosurgery. In these slides, I put a black dot on the complications of bipolar electrosurgery to have a look for it. Complications can be summarized into direct coupling, direct application, insulation failure, inadvertent activation, capacitive coupling, antenna coupling, and residual heat effect. Overview of complications. Direct coupling injury occur when the active electrode touches another metal instrument, such as suction irrigators or camera telescope. Current from the active electrode flow to the second instrument and the potentially burns in a tissue it touches. Direct coupling is a technique related, hence the responsibility of prevention lies with the surgeon. To reduce this risk, energy must not be activated until the instrument is out of metal trocar and its tip is in view. Ports must be placed so as to avoid an instrument shaft from touching the bowels. The active electrode and other metal instrument should be kept in panoramic view to reduce this injury. The surgeon should be the only person to activate the energy. In the event that an arc to an adjacent instrument is seen, the surgeon should examine the lens of that instrument looking for any suspected injury. Overview of complications. Insulation failure. Insulation failure is a breakdown of the insulation layer around the active electrode. Its incidence about 20% in reusable laparoscopic instrument and 3% in disposable instrument, with the distal third of instrument being the most commonly affected site. Robotic instruments are more often affected than their laparoscopic counterparts. Repeated cleaning and sterilization, normal wear and tear, and the use of high voltage output are possible causes of insulation failure. The smaller the hole in insulation, the higher the stray current density, with an increased risk of catastrophic tissue burn. 100% of energy can be delivered to unintended tissue. 
How to decrease the risk of insulation failure? Although it is recommended to inspect the instrument before use, most of these defects are not visible to the naked eye. The use of electrical scans can detect the insulation defect already present before surgery, but not those that may occur during surgery. Because it is difficult to visualize very thin holes with the naked eye, an active electrode with an indicator shaft was designed with the two layers of insulation, black outer layer and yellow inner layer, the shaft is replaced as soon as the yellow layer is exposed, indicating an insulation defect. Active electrode monitoring AEM technology prevents stray current burn from insulation failure and the capacitive coupling. Overview of complications occurs when two conductors separated by insulator discharges current into other surrounding conductive material, looks like tissue or trocar. Capacitive coupling is the transfer of electrical current from the active electrode through intact insulation into adjacent conductive materials without direct contact. Capacitive coupling with hybrid cannula, as we see, we have had like active electrode surrounded by its insulation layer, passed through metallic cannula. This metallic cannula in its turn is surrounded by plastic gripper. When we activate the active electrode, there is capacitive current will be created between this active electrode and the metallic cannula because both of them are conductive separated by insulation layer. This is stray current or capacitive current can't escape to the anterior abdominal wall. Why? Because the plastic gripper preventing this current to escape to anterior abdominal wall from the metallic cannula. The stray current search about another alternative pathway. If the metallic cannula was in contact or near the bowel, this current can escape to the bowel and cause unintended injury. Capacitive coupling during endoscopy. As we see on the upper left side of the screen, the metal cannula system. I need only to mention what is the definition of capacitor. Capacitor means current occurs whenever a non-conductor separates two conductors. In the metal cannula system, during minimal invasive surgery, capacitive coupling can occur by the surgical instrument. The conductive active electrode is surrounded by non-conductive insulation. This is in turn surrounded by a conductive metal cannula. So active electrode, insulation layer, conductive metal cannula, Capacitor can be reduced, but it can be eliminated through anterior abdominal wall of the patient, and the surface area is wide, so the risk of thermal injury is very, very minimal. On the upper right of the screen, the plastic cannula system, capacitance can be entirely eliminated with an all plastic cannula, the patient to conductive tissue completes the definition of a capacitor. Capacitance is reduced, but is not eliminated with the plastic cannula system. Hybrid cannula system. The worst case occur when a metal cannula is held in place by a plastic anchor. Hybrid cannula system. The metal cannula is still create a capacitor with the active electrode. However, the plastic abdominal wall anchor prevents the current from dispersing through the abdominal wall. The capacitively coupled current may exit to adjacent tissue on its way to the patient return electrode, and this can cause significant injury.
need to focus about the using of metallic cannula system and hybrid cannula system. In metallic cannula system, as we see on the left side of the screen, the active electrode, first conductor, separated by insulation layer, pass to the body through the metallic cannula, the second conductors. So two conductors separated by insulation layer, capacitive coupling can occur, but the current escapes through the anterior abdominal wall. As the area of contact between anterior abdominal wall and the metallic cannula is wide surface area, so low current density and very minimal risk of thermal injury. While on the right side of the screen, the hybrid cannula system, the metallic cannula is surrounded by plastic anchor, which prevent the capacitive current to scale to anterior abdominal wall. So this capacitive current on its way to the patient return electrode can touch the nearby, nearby structures, looks like the bowel, and cause very serious thermal injury. Prevention. How we can prevent the capacitive coupling? Avoiding hybrid cannulas, lowering electrosurgical unit power setting, using the cut rather than coagulation mode, using short interrupted activation, avoiding open activation, no operating close to metals in operative field, using active electrode monitoring technology, which can detect stray current from capacitive or from insulation failure, adaptive electrosurgical technology according to the situation, all of this can reduce the risk of capacitive coupling. Overview of complications. Antenna coupling this phenomena occurs when the active electrode cord or the transmitting antenna emits electromagnetic energy in the air, which is captured by a nearby inactive cord or wire. This called receiving antenna. It may be regarded as a type of capacitive coupling and it can result in unintended tissue burns. The receiving antenna may be the camera cord or the wire of monitoring device such as ECG wire or neuromonitoring device. How to avoid the risk? Separating the laparoscopy tower from electrosurgical unit decreases the risk. Avoiding parallel arrangement of cords and lowering the power setting reduce the antenna coupling. It is important to mention that, by contrast with all other complications that occur in the surgical field, this complication is initiated with the cords and the wire bundled of the surgical field in zone 4. Overview of complications. Direct application is another complication. This injury result from lateral thermal spread to unintended tissue near the tip of electrosurgical instrument during activation. It is the most common type of electrosurgical injury with potential thermal burn to the bowel, ureter, or blood vessel. The extent of lateral thermal spread depends on the device used, its power setting, tissue resistance and activation time. Monopolar device can result in high temperature and the greatest degree of lateral thermal spread compared to bipolar and ultrasonic one. The vertical effect is another mechanism of electrosurgical burn. It may occur when a monopolar instrument is applied to a structure with a neurovascular vertical or adhesion. Unintended burn occurs at the remote neurovertical or adhesion where the current density is higher. So it is important to mention here, for example, during cell for ectopic, 
don't start to do monobolar at the end of fallopian tube near the uterus if there is adhesion to the bowels because if you start to cut at this area the current need to escape to the return electrode and there is no way to go to the uterus so where this current will escape it will escaping through this adhesion here in the distal end of the tube and the distal end of the tube attached to the bowel and causing unintended burn. So it is better to start from the distal end of the fallopian tube after it is utilized if you can, rather than starting from the proximal end near the uterus. Here we can see some factor which increasing the lateral thermal spread and the subsequent injury using of monopolar longer application time low tissue compression using continuous application high voltage and high power setting. In contrast, if we are using bipolar coagulation, we will decrease the risk. If the application time is short, we will decrease the risk. If the tissue is compressed in proper way, so we can decrease the risk. If we are using pulsed waves of current rather than continuous, it is factor to decrease the risk. Use low voltage or current waveform decrease the risk and use the low power setting also decrease the risk. Overview of complications. Inadvertent activation can lead to unintentional patient birth. A prevention strategy is as follow. Avoid accidentally stepping on the foot bedder. When the active electrode is not in use, please remove it from the body and place it in a dry, rigid plastic holder, not plastic sleeves, with no other instrument. Use an audible activation tone to be heard by the team. Energy device can maintain the heat at their tips for a variable time after deactivation. Some studies found that ultrasonic energy instruments have a higher residual heat than electrosurgical instrument. Surgeons should avoid touching vital structure with the tip of an electrosurgical device immediately after deactivation. If the bowel is inadvertently Touched with a hot device, it should be examined for blanching and suture should be considered to avoid delayed perforation. Overview of complications Mushroom effect or outside loop As the grasp tissue desiccates and coagulates, its resistance increase, forcing the current to take a pass of less impedance outside the jaw of bipolar instrument. This can result in a collateral thermal injury to the nearby vital structure. So one of the complications of bipolar device. Electrical bypass effect. Over comparison of the tissue between the jaw of the bipolar instrument may cause them to touch, leading to electrical bypass and deficient tissue coagulation. Despite their technical advantages, conventional bipolar devices may not always produce adequate hemostasis and they may require repeated application with an increased risk of lateral thermal spread. Surgeon should rely on subjective visual clues such as a change of the tissue color and the vapor bubbles to judge the adequacy of tissue effect.
Here we can see the four zones of laparoscopic instrument where the injury can occur. Zone one is the part of an instrument within the monitor view. Zone two is the part of an instrument outside the cannula and out of the monitor view. Zone three is the part of an instrument inside the cannula and out of the monitor view. Zone four, it is outside the patient, is the part of the instrument outside the cannula and the abdomen. And if we can remember that antenna coupling occurring in this zone. Electrosurgical smokes. Electrosurgical smoke reduces laparoscopic visualization, which may compromise patient safety. It contains toxic gases, potentially carcinogenic chemicals and viruses. Excessive smoke can cause irritation of the eye and the upper respiratory tract of the theater staff. But there are no reported cases of cancer. A smoke evacuation system should be used to reduce the above risks. Surgical masks are ineffective. Why? Because they only filter particles down to 5 microns, whereas 77% of the smoke particles are smaller than or equal to 1.1 micron. Now I will move to discuss the patient return electrode. It is very important to put in our mind two important criteria for electricity. Always electricity seeks the ground because it is its source, seek the path of least resistance. So they search about the area of least resistance to pass to the ground through it. It is very important to remember this. Grounded electrosurgical system, it, in spite it is all the machines, but maybe still used in other hospitals. So we must be aware about the potential risk. As you know, generator operates by taking alternating current and increase its frequency from 50 or 60 cycle per second to over 200,000 cycle per second. Originally, generators used grounded current from a wall outlet. It was assumed that once the current enters the patient body, it would return to the ground through the patient return electrode. But in reality, electricity will always seek the path of least resistance. When there are many conductive objects touching the patient and leading to the ground, the current will select one of this object as its pathway to the ground. The current will select the most conductive object, which may not be the patient return electrode. And the current concentration at this point may leading to what is called alternate site burn. Again here, we will discuss the current division phenomena. With this phenomena, which is called the current division, the current may split or divide and follow more than one path to the ground. The circuit to the ground is completed whether it travels the intended electrosurgical circuit to the patient return electrode or to an alternate ground reference site. So, remember, patient exposed to the risk of alternate side burn because four factors. Either the current to flow the easiest, most conductive path. The second, any grounded object, not just the generator, can complete the circuit. Three, the surgical environment offers many alternative routes to the ground. And finally, four, if the resistance of the alternate path is low enough and the current flowing to the ground in that path is sufficiently concentrated, an unintended burn may be produced at the alternate grounding site. Have a look to this picture. It can show a different 
form of an alternate site burn that occurred when a grounded electrosurgical generator was used. Isolated electrosurgical system. An isolated electrosurgical system, the circuit is completed not by the ground, but by the generator. Even though grounded object remain in the operating room, electrosurgical current from isolated generators will not recognize the grounded object as a pathway to complete the circuit. Isolated electrosurgical energy recognize the patient return electrode as the preferred pathway back to the generator. By removing the ground as a reference for the current, the isolated generator eliminates many of hazards inherited in the grounded system, most importantly current division and alternate site burns. Deactivated isolated system. If the circuit to the patient return electrode is broken, an isolated generator will deactivate the system because the current can't return to its source. Generators with isolated circuit eliminate the hazard of alternate side burn, but don't protect the patient from return electrode burn, such as one shown at the left. It is important to mention two expressions here. The first one is patient return electrode site injury. The second, alternate site injury. In patient return electrode site injury, the injury occurs at the area of patient return electrode due to improper position. While in alternate site injury, the injury occurs away from the patient return electrode in alternate site looks like the ECG electrode site. As we mentioned, two sites for injury, one return electrode site injury, two alternate site injury. Isolated electrosurgical unit eliminate the alternate site injury, but not eliminate the patient return electrode site injury. Now, what is the difference between active electrode and the patient return electrode? Why the current, when it's passing through, the active electrode produces tissue effect, while when this current is passing through patient return electrode, it doesn't produce the tissue effect. The answer, because the active electrode has a very small surface area in comparison to patient return electrode. So when the current passes through a small surface area, current concentration is high, producing a tissue thermal effect. When the same current passes through the patient return electrode, Patient return electrode has a wide surface area, many thousand greater than the surface area of active electrode. So the current concentration is very low and the thermal effect is none or very minimal thermal effect. So the difference is the surface area. Patient return electrode have a wide surface area low current concentration, no thermal effect. Patient return electrode. Patient return electrode is very important items to prevent the complication of electrosurgery. When we activate the active electrode, it will producing high current concentration and high current density to the target tissue. After producing its effect, this current need to return for electrosurgical unit through the patient. When we apply the patient return electrode in proper way, the concentration of current will be low, so there is no unintended burn to the patient. Again, when the patient return electrode 
is applied in proper way as we see on the left side of the screen so the wide surface area of patient return electrode allow low current concentration and no thermal injury as we see on the right side of the screen patient return electrode is applied in improper way so the contact between patient return electrode and the patient give very small surface area so the current concentration is high and the thermal injury will occur patient return electrode thermal injury So we can see that patient return electrode is not so simple. It is very important thing to be considered. Here example how the patient return electrode is applied on wrong way and it can cause injury and how we can apply in proper way and it can save patient return electrode there is certain criteria must be assessed the first it shows will vascularize the muscle mass to apply it avoid vascular insufficiency area avoid irregular body contour avoid to apply patient return electrode in bony prominence consider the incision site and they repair the area if there is any hair or need to be removed it must be done and the patient position also is very important active electrode must be a non-conductive holster when not in use electrode that doesn't fit holster should be placed in a designated site with the tip away from flammable material Electrosurgical units shouldn't be used in the presence of flammable agents, looks like alcohol or tinctures contained agents. Regarding use electrosurgical unit during a pregnancy, no evidence to contraindicate use of it. Dispersive amniotic fluid protects fetus from concentration of electrical current. No risk of neuromuscular stimulation above 100 kHz so it can be used during pregnancy jewelry should be removed if it is within the activation range of active electrode the same looks like piercing hearing aids best to be removed before surgery as radio frequency leakage may cause interference with it Radio frequency current may damage two piece wireless device. They shouldn't be worn when electrosurgery is used. Tattoos Avoid placing the patient return electrode over a tattoo. Inks, red in particular, contain metals which could serve as a heat or electrical conductor. Electrosurgery can interfere with cardiac implantable electronic devices, such as a permanent pacemakers and implantable cardioverter defibrillators, ICD, as well as other neurological stimulators. Such interference can damage or even inhibit the electromagnetic devices, can cause burn to the myometrium or can cause arrhythmia and a cystery. Prevention strategy. The following steps should be followed to prevent electromagnetic interference. Liaise with the cardiologist preoperative. Use bipolar or ultrasonic devices in patients who are highly dependent on CIED. 
when using the monopolar instrument, place the dispersive electrode as far as away from the pacemaker. Use lower power setting, cut mode to coagulate and short activation. Avoid current vector crossing the pacemaker. Monitor patient pacemaker with ECG during surgery and reprogram after surgery if in needed. Deactivate ICD just before the surgery, then activate after surgery if there is no cardiologist is available. Perform advanced life support in case of cardiac arrest. Here we will discuss some advanced technology which helps to reduce the risk of electrosurgical thermal injury. Now we will discuss about some technologies which can decrease the risk of electrosurgical injury. We will discuss patient return electrode monitoring and active electrode monitoring. Patient return electrode monitoring, this system monitors the patient resistance levels, automatically deactivates the generator if any volt at the patient return the electrode is detected. As we see here, patient return electrode has return electrode monitoring system which can detect any abnormality in the conductivity between the return electrode and the patient. Also detect any change in the patient resistance at the area of return electrode. And if any abnormality, it will stop the generator immediately. Another advanced technology, what is called active electrode monitoring. Active electrode monitoring, this system continuously monitors the conductive shield for the stray current caused by insulation failure and the capacitive coupling. With the conventional monopolar device, an outer insulation layer covers the shaft of active electrode. However, with active electrode monitoring an instrument have two extra coaxial layer, a conductive protective shell, and the second outer insulation layer. So, as we see here, we can see the active electrode in this one, covered by primary insulation layer. This is a conventional monopolar one, but in active electrode monitoring, extra conductive layer added here, covered by extra insulation layer outside. So if any insulation defect or capacitive coupling occurred, the outer insulation layer will protect from occurrence and this current will pass through the second conductive layer outside here to the electrosurgical unit to stop the working of an instrument. Despite and despite it formed from about four layers, but it still can be used with the five millimeter trockers during laparoscopy. Other form of advanced technology, tissue sensing technology, sensing the tissue resistance, decision about tissue and output made every 300 millisecond, lower power setting and the voltage in all mode reduce the patient injury risk. The three mode device, it is alternative form of advanced technology where the active electrode contain three buttons, one for coagulation or for cutting and one for coagulation and the cutting together. Here 
here we are discussing about good practice tips in monopolar device use a lower possible power setting dispersive electrode position must be considered use short intermittent activation avoid open activation use either patient return electrode or active return electrode technology vary the surface area of the active electrode to achieve the desired effect without increasing the power setting use the continuous low voltage waveform cut mode for contact co in bipolar allow a safety margin when close to vital structure Avoid tension on the tissue during activation. Keep the jaw of the instrument clean all the time. Don't use in tissue with a metal clips or staples in situ. Avoid over compression of the grasp tissue. Don't include a big bundle of the tissue in the jaw of the instrument to for good seal. Consider skeletonizing the vessels before application to achieve a good seal. In patients with comorbidities such as liver cirrhosis, be extra cautious alternating surgical method. It is very important to mention that active electrode cords shouldn't be wrapped around a metal instrument. Active electrode and other electrical cords shouldn't be bundled together. I will be very happy if I receive your feedback about my YouTube channel where you can review this lectures and another lectures. You can go to Google and search about Ashraf Dwaidar YouTube channel and I will be very delighted to see your comment. I would like to thank the reference. I would like to thank Dr. Mohsen Sayed, the author of very important paper, Safe Use of Electrosurgical and Gynecological Laparoscopic Surgery, published 2020. Also, I would like to thank Company of Covidian, where it is free website for safety of electrosurgery, and of course, up to date which you provide us with updated reference. I would like to thank my wife, Mona, and my daughter, Lara, for their great effort and helping me for preparing and for designing this topic. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.